All right, lads, the Fort Nightmares update is now here, and it's brought a couple of new weapons into the game. And it's been a while since we've done a weapon tier list. Our last one was at the very beginning of this season. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through my old rankings of these items, and then put all the new items that have come into Fortnite since then onto this list. And I'll give you a couple of tips, a couple strategies, a couple explanations for my rankings so that you can get your victory royales as easily as possible. Now, when I look at what I picked for best at the beginning of this season, it seems to be about the same as it is now except for Captain America's shield. This has been severely nerfed since the beginning of this season. People have wised up on how to combat it, and it really is just shoot the damn thing. If you combine it with the auto turret though, it can be pretty cheesy, and sometimes people will get the leg up on you just because of the amount of damage the auto turret does. So I think really, I'm gonna move both of these items into a different place. The Captain America shield goes into zero build as well as the auto turret because this is just one of the cheesiest and downright lamest strategies you can use in the game, but it can get you wins. When I look at the build only list, I think I'll move the siphon coin up, and this siphon coin works very well in ranked. What you gotta know about ranked right now is that they actually added siphon back into ranked. So not only will you get lifesteal on elimination just by virtue of playing the ranked mode, you'll get the coins lifesteal on top of that. So depending on which week you're playing, you could be getting 100 HP on elimination, and that's insane. That's the most insane healing that's ever been in Fortnite ranked. But beyond that, I think the only difference here is we gotta drop the combat rifle down because it's not actually in the game anymore. It was kind of a question of redundancy. Why was it in the game to begin with at the beginning of the season? And because of that, I'm going to move the pistol up. And the only thing that really holds the pistol back from being a perfect weapon is that you have to kit this weapon. And it kind of involves the broader topic of mods on weapons and how they're hard to get. And the mods that drop on the weapons are not really good to begin with. Some people have claimed that they're random, but I have had multiple instances of getting the same rarity weapon with the same bad modifications on it. So Epic Games is specifically holding back some of these items, specifically the Burst AR. It's very rare to get a gold or purple Burst AR with a scope right out of the chest. But then you gotta go all the way to a mod bench, which you normally have to fight for to even mod these items. It's something that I really hope they rework in Fortnite Chapter 6. Comment down below how you feel about the current mod system. Now the jetpack drop rate has been nerfed, so the shockwave goes up to the build only. And that's because there's actual techniques you can use to get eliminations in build mode with this. Plus in build mode, it's a little bit easier to evade jetpack users since you can actually put walls in front of yourself. However, everything else on this list I stand by, and I just want to make note if this is your first time watching one of my tier lists, you always want to have Flowberry Fizz on you. This is something that has made its way all up to the pro meta, and you should really think of Fizz not just as a healing item, but also a movement item. Whether it's the berries or it's the actual jar, this thing will save your life. And it combines very well with the shockwave grenades for a super jump. Getting into the new items, we had Gwenpool's SMG come at the very beginning of the season, and the only difference between this and a regular double SMG is that it has half the reload time. So for that, I guess I can put it right above that weapon, but this thing has a severe range issue, and that's what keeps it from being really useful. Next, we have the Stark Rifle, and this thing is interesting. It shares the gimmick with the Sovereign, where the hip fire is faster than the ADS, but ultimately, you can't put mods on it at all, so it can't even take a scope. And because of that, I would really only use it in build mode. This is just something that can maybe get through walls or follow up your pump shotgun. Then we have Iron Man's Flight Kit, and this item is pretty interesting. It'll get you the furthest distance of any movement item, hands down. And if you're combining it with Iron Man's Combat Kit, you can actually cancel out of the flight animation into the attack animations. But otherwise, you have to land with this thing, and that leaves you pretty vulnerable. I don't want to say it's useless, but it's really a matter of if you can't get anything else, this is probably what you're going to use, and you can actually get shot out of the sky while using it, so I'm going to put it at the very top of useless. Just consider it the last resort movement item. However, Iron Man's combat kit, really, really good, but it's a zero build only thing. It has a lock-on function for its projectiles that'll let you rack up high damage, like 30 per hit, 45 on headshot, and the Unibeam can blast through walls, though I find that a lot less useful. And the last of the Marvel items is Shuri's Black Panther Claws, and these actually got removed with the Fortnite Mares update. 
but I want to put them on the list because I didn't get a chance to rank them, and it's kind of weird that they would take out one of the Marvel powers anyway. Now, unfortunately, this thing was pretty much useless. It did give you enhanced running speed. It gave you the slap effect, essentially, from one of the older seasons. But it had a very disappointing melee attack, and at the end of the day, it was just outclassed by all the other movement items in the game. Even worse than Iron Man's flight kit. However, the item that replaced it, the chainsaw, is a significant improvement and this thing has a much better melee attack it does more damage per strike it's actually capable of eliminating players and not only that its movement mechanic can actually damage walls and it's very good against armored walls so you can use this to plow through builds and do some crazy things that people are not going to expect and because of that i'm going to put it in the best right now actually if you can't get a jetpack i would definitely recommend the chainsaw and you might want to even combo them together if you have an automatic shotgun the witch's broom is another option but unfortunately for the witch's broom it's been nerfed not only does it have a very high recharge time but it also has a limited amount of uses now and because of that i definitely think it's a last resort kind of item its real purpose is to get you vertical i think because if you try to use this to escape, you're just going to get caught by anyone using shockwaves or jetpacks. So because of that, I'm going to put it in build only. And the tactic I like to use with this is to get the initial launch into the air to get onto the higher ground. And then contend people who have gotten the hide on me. Now we have two items that come with each other. They're actually part of a boss battle down in Brawler's Patch. The wood stake shotgun and the pumpkin RPG. If you get one, you're going to get the other. But they are very different in their utility. First off, the wood stake shotgun is a slug shotgun. So that means you got to be very precise with it. If you miss, you miss. So 100% this has to go to build mode. But I'm going to put it up against the regular hammer pump shotgun because the regular hammer pump in this game, it's like the worst pump shotgun that's ever been in the game. Disappointing damage, disappointing fire rate, disappointing everything. And if you're actually good in hitting your shots, you'll do more damage per shot with the wood stake shotgun. The pumpkin launcher is nice, but I can't really call it best. I'm just going to put it in build mode at the very bottom with the wood stake shotgun. The thing that really holds this back is there's no actual explosive ammo on the map. When you get this from the boss, you're only going to have five rounds with it. And that means if you're actually getting in fights, you're going to use it up pretty quickly. And at the end of the day, it's not going to destroy builds as well as Doom's Gauntlets or War Machine's gloves will it's just kind of something you use for fun flavor of the season and last we have the billy bomb and these are part of the saw collaboration and these things are pretty disappointing quite honestly the idea is that you throw them on the map and they'll track enemy players and go towards them and explode on them but their tracking is so bad and the damage is so low that it's really a question of why Maybe you can use these as a trap if you're like camping a building or something, but to me that's a suboptimal strategy, so I'm going to put them in useless under the porta bunkers because I think they'll actually just get beat by the porta bunker. If you're getting tracked by these things in zero build, throw a porta bunker they're not going to be able to hit you. And that's pretty much how the balance for the Fortnite Mers update shakes out. But I recommend you check out this video next to me where I go over all the rank changes that happen in this season. If you're done dying to the Marvel powers, if you're done playing around with the jetpack, but you still want to use the Fort Nightmares items, I recommend dropping in because it is definitely the most fun game mode to me right now. And of course, use code SOURHEART in the Fortnite item shop if this video helped you out.